first of all, you got to introduce yourself. You got to tell us your name and then tell us where you are from. Yeah, so my name is Hugo, Hugo Reyes. Um, I originated from Mexico, right, in a state called Puebla. It's maybe about two hours away from Mexico City, so it's right next to that. So when I was actually three years old, uh, my mom brought me here to the United States. Uh, you know, little story on that was we actually crossed the desert and for maybe two three days and two nights. And uh, we ended up in Illinois. So in Illinois, uh, we, my dad bought a house in Addison. And in Addison, I've been living there for about 20 plus years. I grew up there, went to school there, and uh, you know, graduated high school from there as well. So that's a little story from where I'm from. Wow. I mean, you can solidate that real good, dude. That's like, man, you crossed the desert. That's crazy, man. Well, glad, glad the family made it. And so it makes you grew up in Addison, Illinois. Uh, you went to grammar school, high school there. And then after high school, like what, 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 what happened? Like you go to college, like what was the, you had a Yeah. Place? So I went to college for a little bit. I went to college of DuPage there. Um, very quickly it started, you know, the bill started piling up. It was a little harder to kind of graduate, uh, where I wanted to graduate or where, where I wanted to be. And I was working, uh, at that time, two jobs, right? I was working as a caregiver, so um, I was doing that usually from Monday to Friday. And then um, on the weekends, I would drive some Uber. Funny story is that I actually got introduced to rework when I was driving Uber, right? So a man, you know, got in my, uh, my vehicle and uh, it was an hour drive and I just kind of started making conversation with him. Told him a little bit about what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be, how I was very interested in sales. And then um, at the end of the ride, he said, if you're really interested, here's, this is an organization, a nonprofit organization. If you're serious about it, contact them. Um, I waited for a month or two because I was kind of skeptical. But um, around November time, that's when I submitted my application and I, and I was approved. So again, um, I was doing those kind of jobs and it so happened that I was talking to the right person at the right time. And you know, a little thing that I had with me was I wanted to make sure that every person that came into my car, I sparked a type of conversation with them. And that led me to you guys. So, so outside, you said, man, you were driving Uber. You did, it was caregiver. What other type of jobs did you have before uh, well, last, before Reaver? Yeah, so I was a utility man. Um, you know, I was working at a warehouse. I was working um, at a uh, White Castle fast food restaurants. I mean, I, I was doing, I was doing it all right. Because at that time it was, uh, because I was a student, not a lot of, not a lot of companies want to work with students because it's so demanding, um, uh, with time schedules and stuff like that. So I was always getting different types of jobs, being in different types of atmospheres, uh, traveling sometimes for my jobs. Uh, and there were labor intensive jobs, nothing compared to what I do now, but they were, I was from job to job because of my school schedule and because a lot of people didn't really want to work with, with the schedules. So I was a uti utility man for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you mentioned you said you were skeptical. So why was you, what, what made you skeptical? Where, where did the skepticism come from? You know, because before then, when I was in high school, uh, or I'm sorry, college, I was always um, approached by people, right, with pyramid scams, right? Um, and so they would say, hey, come, come on board. We'll, you're going to have a great job. Um, and then you just got to get people in it too. And then from there, you know, you're going to make so much money. So I did one of those pyramid schemes. Um, and I was working with, uh, you know, selling knives, cutlery, trying to get people in under my wing. And so I was doing all that. I mean, nothing, it wasn't all for nothing because I did learn a lot of social skills, a lot of sales techniques and stuff like that. But you know, I did that. And then soon after uh, someone else came approached me with Prime America and selling life insurance and all this stuff. And again, promising you the world. So when, when I was driving this Uber and this man told me, you know, this is an organization, it's going to get you a job in corporate America. I was like, kind of heard that many times. Right. So I was skeptical at first I was, but uh, soon after I was like, you know, I, I got to take a shot right now, right here. And if I don't, then there's going to be something that I'll lose, right? I lose a lot and um, because I didn't take that opportunity. But I'm glad that I did take that opportunity because it, it so happened to be not a scam. It happened to be 
uh, people that actually are trying to uh, work for your benefit and help you out and take you to the next level, actually introduce you to corporate American companies, you know, like Groupon, Google, you know, um, so many others, Sprout Social, among others, right? So I was, I was actually glad that I took that, that, uh, that chance. Yeah. So, my, you know, so think about like rework, you know, one of our values is adopt the growth mindset. Were there any adjustments that you had to make? Or like, was there any, like, what was the probably most difficult part, I guess, in, in the journey after you got to um, Right off the bat, right? Uh, you know, when when we did uh, the introductory to your rework, you know, we, we all introduced each other. I was all good with that. You know, the why presentation, I was really good with talking in front of people. But the one thing I was really scared of at the time because you guys kind of uh, tell us what the expectations are at the end of the program we would have to call people right to get them to join rework i was really scared for that right that was that was the only adjustment that i had to do uh, was basically get better on the phone make sure that i was sounded confident uh just kind of getting the fear out of the way ahead of time and talking amongst my peers because realistically that's what you would be doing in a real job in a real atmosphere uh, in the tech companies right and so that's the only adjustment that I had to do really, really quick, because I knew if uh, I was scared to talk on the phone, if I was scared to talk in front of my peers or around my peers, then I wouldn't actually cut it. Right. So that was the biggest adjustment that I had to do. I had to make sure that I was sounding confident over the phone. I had to make sure I was OK talking around my peers. And, and so I did. I, I, I had to do it. Yeah, solid, solid, solid. And so. um. You know, like looking back from those those jobs that you had before to now, like, would you say you've grown? Are you making more money now? Did any did life change, or was it you know? Yeah, I would say that that my life changed uh, for the better, good, right? Because even before I I did rework and I got the job because I uh, I actually landed a job with Groupon. They gave me the opportunity, right? I got an interview with them, interviewed with them, and then they gave me essentially an opportunity. But before then, I was, you know, doing jobs uh, here and there, uh, part-time job, full-time job, doing two jobs, working 40 plus hours to make about maybe a thousand, thousand two hundred. I was really happy when I was making a thousand two hundred dollars, right? And um, I was in debt. I was very, very in debt. So I, I didn't know what I was doing, right? Uh, with having upwards of three, four thousand dollars in debt, I just didn't know what to expect, didn't know, I was kind of scared, you, you know, I was kind of wandering around. And when I landed that job at Groupon, you know, I, I was making a lot more for just only 40 hours a week or, or four hours in two weeks. So I was making double that of what I was making, uh, having these part-time jobs and just hourly wages. And that's not including the commission that they gave you at the end of the, the month. When I had my first check after my first month at the sales floor, I remember looking at my bank account, my bank statement, and I'm like, payroll must have done like a bad job. I think they got this wrong because I'm not used to making over $1,200 for this work week. And, and I'm like, I'm probably cheating the company because I only worked 40 hours, man, like 40 hours and I'm getting all this money. And so I remember just looking and staring at the screen at this big amount of money. I'm like, this is enough to pay my debt. And I remember being so grateful that I took that opportunity with rework. I remember being, you know, just very, I felt some sense of accomplishment because it's not easy. Right. And, and at, at that time, I'm like, this is, this is worth it. This was everything just clicked. All the pieces came together and, and I'm glad I took this opportunity. And as a matter of fact, I was really happy with rework because they took the opportunity with me. So yeah, I'm, I'm making more than I was making before. I mean, I don't have to work two jobs. I don't have to work two, you know, 40 hours a week, uh, more than 40 hours uh, for two weeks. And so, yeah, I, it, it changed my life for sure and got me out of debt. So that was the best thing I could ask for. Dope, dope, dope. So then two more questions, man. First, so, so I think, you know, so I, you, you, you're you unique. You know, we all have our uniquenesses, right? We bring something different to the table and it's, it's, it's great because for you, you know, you have a Latin heritage, you know, a Latinx heritage. Actually, that's the, the vernacular that everybody else uses, right? But like your message resonates differently. So if you can go back and talk to somebody that was like in your shoes you know, three years ago, uh, what would you say to that person? I would just say, you know, honestly, I would say keep working, keep working hard because there's always going to be better and um, 
more exciting opportunities out there, right? You can't get rid of your work ethic because one of the biggest things, yeah, you're right. Like I have a different, uh, just a little different story, right? Because we all struggle. I am, I'm, I'm from the Latinx, um, you know, culture and generation. And my Spanish helped me so much, right? And, and my, my roles. And um, I'm really grateful for that. But one thing that I never gave up was my work ethic because I consistently worked hard and um, that translated over to, you know, corporate American job with the opportunity that I was given. So I tell, I tell the people that are out there that are, you know, maybe don't, don't have a job or are pretty, pretty frustrated with their jobs. Just keep working hard, right? Look for those open opportunities. People are going to, people, you, you attract people with your work ethic. You attract people with the positive mindset, the positive outlook, um, and, and the want to succeed. So keep doing what you're doing because people are going to uh, come out to you, reach out to you and give you opportunities that you've never imagined ever having. So that's what I would tell uh, three years from, uh, ago, that's what I would tell that one individual or myself three years ago, keep working, keep working hard, keep talking to people, talk, it's, talk to as many people as you can, introduce yourself, introduce your, your mission, your plan, where you wanna be, how you wanna get there. And people are going to be attracted to you because they wanna help a person like you. Dope, dope, dope. Last but not least, right? So you heard the commercials, right? You heard everybody saying they they tip bit. Uh, and so what this goes like is like, man, you got to give me a, a, a commercial. And uh, at the end of the commercial, you're going to end it with get this work, right? Like you got to have yeah. get this work somewhere in there. Man, give me give me your commercial. If you need a second, think about it, think about it. But like at the end with get this work. It's hard. Life is hard. Um, you have passion. You have ambition. You want to go somewhere. You see yourself somewhere higher than where you currently are now. Don't give up. Keep working hard. And uh, at the end of the day, look out Look out for people that can help you. Can I start all over? I don't think that was good enough. Do it. Do it. <laughs> so again, it's uh, kind of promoting rework, right? Yeah. I mean, not, not even. It's just like you know, the get this work piece, right? It's just like whatever that means. It's like what you were saying was, was dope, right? Well, it's just like, you know, the get this work piece is just like to that point of like, man, it's going to require work. You know, we tell it to candidates, like, get this work. You know, like you, 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 it was almost a theme of everything you said, like, don't stop working, right? It's, you got to keep working, right? But then, we, I mean, we said the companies too, because they're like, oh, we want talent. And it's like, well, you got to get this work. Like, you can't just like, this is not going to come. You got to adjust. You got to be willing to, you know, change. Right. And so it. like, yeah, man, we, we said it to everybody. Got it. So for those who are looking for an opportunity, come get this work with Rework. If you're ambitious, if you want to succeed in life, um, if you want an opportunity or someone to give you an opportunity, Rework is the right place to start. Uh, you have to make sure that you're ambitious, um, that you have the grit, the grind, and always consistently keep working hard at what you do. So come get this work. Cool, cool. Good stuff, man. Yeah.